Hi, I'm Ellen Leva coming to you live from the ABC7 newsroom. We're following a pursuit we thought we would share with you because it's uh, getting a little bit uh, dicey as we watch this person drive this car. He also has a passenger in the car. Uh, CHP is pursuing that suspect right now. We know that that chase started in Upland. Police say they tried stopping the car for just broken taillights. And then the chase has been on the 10 freeway in Baldwin Park where the CHP was behind it just a short time and speeds reaching up to 90 miles per hour. He's driving extremely erratic. Uh, we've seen him go on the wrong side of the road, uh, just weaving in and out of traffic. Um, speeds reaching up, as, like I said, 90 miles an hour on the freeway. Um, then it went south on the 605 freeway. Now the LA County Sheriff's Department has been behind these suspects now happening in the Downey Norwalk area. But you can see they're driving um, not in the lanes on the shoulder of the road, uh, kind of trying to get weaving out of traffic. But you see CHP officers are right behind him. They are now traveling down the five southbound. Looks like he might be exiting the freeway right now. Um, we did see some uh, sort of showboating happening a little bit ago with the passenger waving um, the hand outside the window. We don't know if it's a woman or a man, but uh, perhaps taking photographs or taking some video in um, one of the neighborhoods. And now they seem to be just uh, traveling along this uh, freeway now. Um, again, we just we don't know if there's any more wants for this particular suspect. Let's see now exiting Florence Avenue. And we'll see where that person goes because it's uh, right now blocked in by, as you can see, two big trucks. But original want was simply um, broken taillights. So apparently they have something that they're hiding that they don't want officers to catch them because if it was just broken taillights, you'd think it would be just a done deal. Oh, okay, trying to back up on an off ramp. Probably not a smart idea. There you see the passenger. Um, oh, getting out of the car. It's interesting. Um, not sure what he's doing with the leg there, but he's trying to talk to this uh, truck driver that's next to him. Okay, we know it's a man. Oh, does he have something in his hand that looks like a cell phone? I hope that's a cell phone and nothing else. This is at Studebaker and Downey in the um, Downey Norwalk area. Okay, taking a left right there onto, I believe, let's see, Studebaker, Studebaker Road. Yeah. So, okay, was able to get out of that little pickle where he was blocked in by a couple trucks there. We know now that it is two males in this vehicle going on the wrong side of the road, uh, which we've seen multiple times. And uh, just disregard for any type of safety, especially with that showboat happening and just uh, ignoring all kinds of traffic rules and disregarding officers there, but also going at really high speeds. We could get that uh, speed perhaps up on our sky map. So now the suspect is heading north down Florence Avenue, um, going 58 miles an hour there. Um, don't know what the speed limit is there, but certainly has been breaking all the speed limits uh, during this chase. Again, happening in Upland. Don't know if they are wanted for anything else. We don't have any more information on um, what perhaps is making them run from authorities. In situations like this, we just hope that it can end peacefully and without anybody getting injured. So far, I think there haven't been any injuries that we know of. Um, but again, traveling wrong side of the road, just trying to get around traffic no matter what, no matter how we can. And keep in mind you're watching this along um, with me here on abc7.com and uh, trying to effort some more information, but we are just hoping that the suspect can pull over, turn, turn himself in peacefully. Um, we saw earlier he was going down an alleyway and we saw the passenger throw some items out of the passenger side window into sort of a trying to reach for a garbage dump. So I don't know if they were able to obtain that item or items that they threw out the car. But 
obviously something to hide. Perhaps it was drugs, well, ammunition, who knows. But we did see him dispose of some things earlier from the car. Well, can you tell what kind of car that is, um, producer? Or, yeah, it does, it does look like a Honda. Perhaps a Honda Accord. Don't know if it's a stolen vehicle at this point, but um, we knew the taillights were out, and that's what gave him away and started uh, this pursuit into action in the upland area. I believe, I could be mistaken, but I think that um, they, they have been in this area before during this pursuit. So maybe it's an area he knows. Some of the showboating that was happening, I don't know if that meant he was in his own neighborhood. Sometimes that is the case. Um, right now, going on Paramount Boulevard, still in the Downey Norwalk area. Taking a left on Lubeck Street, the residential areas. You always hate to see them going into the residential areas because that's where people can get hurt. Pedestrians, whoa, okay. Just going on the wrong side to take a, another left. Almost in the car, you saw a pedestrian there crossing the street. Tweedy Lane, Tweedy Lane, okay. Coming to another stop, I was rolling through it, passing that car just to turn right in front of him. It's kind of miraculous that uh, he hasn't hit anybody the way he's been driving. Now headed back on Florence Avenue, so maybe he knows this area. Okay, see if he can squeeze, he's trying to get his way through these cars and squeeze by. Smart on that car, it's part to step aside. When you see a driver like this, it's, it's the best to get out of the road because you see how fast he's going compared to the other cars and, the, and other traffic. Again, it started in Upland and apparently the initial want was simply just uh, broken taillights. And then that chase uh, went on the 10 freeway through Baldwin Park. CHP was chasing him there, very high speeds, 90 miles an hour on the freeway. And then he went south on the 605 freeway. We know there are two people in this car. Um, the passenger often uh, is waving his hands out the window, again, throwing some items out of the window uh, during part of the pursuit where he was in an alleyway. Philip Palmer is joining me now. Try to make heads or tails of this pursuit that's going on, but um. well, from the newsroom when I was watching, mm -hmm. it it was not certainly a reckless type of chase, um, but it's certainly one that nobody likes to see mm -hmm. um, at this time of day, and especially with so much space on the roadways, with everybody generally staying home, the mm -hmm. high speeds can just take off exactly. so quickly and become that much more risky because people don't realize this is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, it's lunch break and. You're out, you're about, and then somebody comes blowing by you at 90 miles an hour, and clearly this person is making all kinds of illegal changes and turns mm -hmm. and putting everybody at risk. And it's hard because most people have their windshields up. You don't hear the helicopters overhead. You just kind of, you get a surprise when this car just whizzes by you. But now I, these residential streets are the part that makes you a little bit nervous. You can see the passenger kind of being a little agitated in the front seat, uh, moving around. Well, in crosswalks, I mean, mm -hmm. I think the thing that terrifies me most about these chases when people are like, we just saw an illegal turn and then look at that. Yep. You know, if you're walking through an intersection with your family member, you're walking with the light, you're walking as you're supposed to, and this happens, you hopefully have heard some sort of siren that, that gives you an alert that this is coming. 
But there's a very good look at the passenger to see what they're doing. I can't tell if their legs yeah. are crossed or if they're just... On the phone, it okay. looks like probably doing some Facebook Live or something ridiculous like that. Who knows? <laughs> and just, to, you know, again, at this point, not that dangerous, but again, you know, and there's, there's the sheriff mm -hmm. helicopter just yeah. right above them. So it, it's, sometimes it gets so frustrating because it's so generally futile what these people are doing, and they do mm. nothing but put other people at risk. Exactly. Um, with turns like that, mm -hmm. but they've certainly got plenty of officers right behind. Yeah, I'm counting, boy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, eight officers behind this guy. Currently on Scout Avenue and... Oh, here is another like, officer. Uh, Clara and Scout, and this is, again, in East Los Angeles. The person continues to just uh, drive... At their leisure. It's not like it's a high rate of speed, but boy, they do have a tendency to get out on those intersections. Uh, and keeps just... going back to Florence Avenue. We, I think about the fourth time we've seen that. Well, that's, that's the good news. Uh, you, you would think that's the good news because if, if a pattern develops for the driver, that gives authorities a chance to get in front of them, put down mm -hmm. a spike strip, maybe blocked off, block off an intersection or two, and uh, try to put this to an end. Yeah. Um, but again, as you look at this, it's there is... That's the danger, right down the left exactly. turn lane, uh, way too early, but I guess that might have been with the light. So mm -hmm. I do know because of my son's driver's test, you're not able to do, you're not doing that over a hundred feet, I believe. Yeah. The, you're not supposed to go through, that, through yeah. that and certainly not at that rate of speed. I went through that too with my kids. Oh, <laughs> those, those are the rules. It's been a long time since I took the test. A very long time. <laughs> so we pulled out on the shot just a little bit, but you can kind of see more so with that shot, how, what his options are as far as where he's driving and how he's driving there. And uh, this is one of those things where if they can, again, get down to one of these other streets ahead of him, mm -hmm. if he starts making the same moves, then you start to block things off. Plus, yeah. you know, another thing, too, we were talking about people not being aware. If you're staying in that same area and you see this chase go by you two or three times, that, the, yes, that you know, does that's raise, also a plus. raise a flag, that's definitely. Yeah, it's uh, kind of slowing down through this residential area. Um, we saw earlier where he was trying to get off one of the ramps and um, op the passenger opened the door and was trying to you know, tell the truck to get out of the way. And um, That usually doesn't go well no. in many cases <laughs> because didn't. people get very frustrated when this happens to them, near them. Mm -hmm. That kind of move, going through that kind of speed bump is not going to be a big plus, or at least for the car. Yeah. But never stops, just rolls through these stop signs. Harlan, now on Hurley Avenue. Horley Avenue. Yeah, he does seem to be staying in that Downey Norwalk area. And maybe looking for his opportunity to, you know, slip into some alleyway or something. Earlier we saw him dump some items out on the... In well, an alleyway. And it looked like something else was just thrown out the window as well, so that is going to continue to be a situation. Hmm. Now they're at, this is the first time we've seen yeah, them stop and the they're. Yeah, the windshield wipers are going. It's not, hmm. All right. It, you know, this is, this is the kind of chase that you, you really don't know what to say other than just sit here and watch because exactly. it, it, there's not a remarkable risk uh, to the population as this person is driving around and around and around. And, and if you, you see that the police officers aren't pressing uh, the activity, so to speak, it doesn't look like they're in place to do a pit maneuver because they've pulled back, I, I don't know, it looks like maybe 100 yards. So, you know, th this is the kind of chase there. They don't want to encourage some sort of action. But look at this. Yeah, this now you're on the wrong side of the road. This is the kind of driving we've seen over and over again, just on the wrong side of the road, just trying to get past the traffic. Paramount Boulevard. I think he's been on this road as well before. So it's in the Downey Norwalk area. Um, and again, now that here you have a, a divided four lane, maybe even you know, four lane with the median there in the middle. So now the become, question becomes, is he going to get into traffic there on Paramount, which is a much busier street and there's really nowhere to go. But again, do officers want to press the issue, get up so close behind him that it encourages even more unsafe activity, which that you don't want to do either, especially when you look at traffic. Look at the flow of traffic here, and you can tell that this person is not going remarkably fast compared to 
those around. And now it looks like we are about to get onto a freeway. Am I, or did they go under the freeway? Oh, okay, it's just under the freeway, didn't they? Okay. Just another uh, larger road. So they continue on Paramount there. Uh, that's the Pico Rivera exit, and they stayed. I thought maybe they went, might be merging onto the freeway at that point. No. So uh, maybe if you could just update me, Where, when did this begin? And uh, so we've been on this now for about 20 minutes or so. Yeah, apparently it began in Upland. I don't know the exact time, but a chase started in Upland. Uh, police tried to pull this guy over for broken taillights. And look at this move. Uh, yeah. Um, Jeez. So somebody was in front of him, couldn't make the left turn, so he went into oncoming traffic mm -hmm. and nearly hit a person who was turning left, likely with their own arrow. And now we have gotten on to Telegraph, uh, Telegraph and Loman Avenue now in Whittier. So if you live in the Whittier area and you hear the sirens or see the helicopters above, it's probably due to this chase. Yeah, you might want to uh, stay out of your car, stay indoors. Chase uh, has already been on the 10th freeway in Baldwin Park. And then it was, that's where he was going, about 90 miles per hour on the freeway. Then it went south on the 605 freeway and it's been in this general area for a while. Uh, okay, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see some of these maneuvers that this guy's pulled. Look at going up on the sidewalk, almost hitting that car in the red, going left right in front of him. Uh, there's been several little incidents. I think this is where he dumps. Yep, there he do something out. Try to get it in the back of that pickup. This is when he's hot dogging, taking some video. He's on, is that, oh, he's on one cell phone taking video. Well, they've stopped now on the left, which is the live shot. So if you notice, he's stayed back far enough that he's not going to get pinched in by the van in front of him or somebody behind. But this is, you know, this is when you want, okay, see if you'll see how far police are back from him. See there? They backed off. Yeah, quite a bit. they've backed off significantly. This could be, they might just be monitoring this from the air at this point because that, I think that shot where you showed just now, him hopping up on the sidewalk is exactly what they're trying to avoid. Exactly. You get up too close to somebody that is showing this. And by the way, they may know who it is at this point. If mm -hmm. the car's not reported as stolen, uh, if it's, it, it is, true. It, you know, if they know, if they know who it is and they may, with, with the person with the uh, mic, uh, the phone, mm -hmm. they may have already called. Um, yep. So there's a lot of information that authorities have that we don't have uh, that is going to absolutely play a role in what they do regarding the chase. Yeah, because we did see eight and uh, eight or so black and whites behind him just moments ago. Now you don't see them. Now we're merging onto the five. So we'll see where this goes now because the surface roads, uh, there were a lot of risks uh, turning against uh, the light, going through uh, the you know, wrong way into traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, now he's driving over on the shoulder of the five freeway, but unable to get oh, just very just high rate of speed because of the congestion there. But it looks like he might either get back off the freeway or he's trying to pass somebody on the right. I can't really tell with Air 7 at that down quite a tightness. Bit, or he and he threw something out of his... So my imagination is a car kind of doing some funny stuff. Oh, it like well, he, 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 was, he was off on the right shoulder trying to pass somebody in front of him that we just couldn't see oh, okay. uh, because we were real tight on the shot. But see, now he's passing on oh, the right, go. going around people. He's trying to just get clear of this congestion, it looks like. And we can't see, uh, you know, the folks in the helicopter can see forward, but we can't see what traffic looks like ahead of him. But it looks like that is fairly congested. Mm -hmm. And now I just can't tell if CHP or anyone is behind him at this point. Yeah, doesn't, uh, well. Because they weren't when he was on Paramount. Right, yeah. They had, they had pulled back significantly, but you know they're still following him from the air. Yeah, maybe they just went into tracking mode, like you said, Philip. He might know who he is. I'm just trying to see uh, a lot of times with SkyMap 7, we also have uh, the speed. So we can't really tell the speed, but there it looks like an exiting of the freeway. So now apparently getting off of the freeway and looks like that might be Danvers. Is that where he has taken off? There's the speed right there in the middle. So you can see it's only about 50, 54 miles an hour and slowing down now because he's on the streets. So the Paramount Boulevard again, is that right? Yeah, it does look like it. Okay. It does look like he's back. And so, again, it's interesting that he went to Paramount because that's the one area he was most congested. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you're pinched up. And this is this kind of thing that sometimes people will not get out of the way. Because if you're just a person, you don't realize a chase is going on and somebody bumps you he from behind, yeah. you might want to get out of the car and find out what's just happened. Or you just think he's a jerk, you know, and it's just... Uh but well, you're could. certainly going to want to exchange information, but now you've got all these people. And look, right? Uh, oh, boy. So the person in the red car there is probably very confused as to what's going on, unless they have been able to see authorities behind mm -hmm. him, and maybe then they know that it's Chase and just to clear out of the way. Right. So again, we're coming up on 1.30. This is special coverage of a chase that has been going on for about uh, a half an hour now, um, just watching this chase go along and it's in uh, it's on Paramount and <laughs> no signs of stopping at this uh -uh. point. Yeah, we know two suspects were in the car uh, initially wanted because they had a broken tail light and uh, refused to pull over. So the chase began went on the 10 freeway through Baldwin Park. Um, high rates of speed there then on the 605 freeway. L.A. County Sheriff's Department has been behind these suspects in the Downey Norwalk area for quite some time. Uh, they keep going back to this particular area and especially Paramount Boulevard. He's been on that um, boulevard quite a few times and saw him uh, dump a few things out of the car throughout this chase. And also uh, the p passenger kind of doing some showboating, waving around, taking videos, pictures, coming up on trying to take a right here, see if he's going to try to slip by these cars. Um, we saw him bump a car out of frustration a little bit earlier. Now, okay, taking a right on to Florence Avenue. Seems to be slowing down a bit, but still in that Downey, uh, Downey, the Downey Norwalk area still. Seems to have the street to himself right now. Not a lot of traffic, which is a good thing. Less people at risk and uh, see what he, if he continues in this area or tries to get back on a freeway, who knows? Didn't stay on that five freeway for very long. Still on Florence Avenue. Seems like as long as other cars aren't on the road, it's relatively safe, his driving. Um, it's only when he gets kind of boxed in at red lights or stop signs that he sort of panics and does these wrong way turns or gets on the wrong side of the road. Again, staying in this uh, Downey Norwalk area and, you know, perhaps he knows this area. A lot of suspects just travel around, um, go toward places that they're familiar with. Maybe they want to show off for their friends. Maybe that's why he was taking videos and, and getting his camera out. Maybe he's looking for a place that he can sneak in and try to get away from authorities and, and pull into an alleyway that he knows. But obviously uh, familiar with this area because he seems to be sticking around this particular um, few blocks. Uh, window down. Can't see really what he's doing. Just, we know the passenger had a couple of cell phones a second uh, a while ago. All right, uh, swerving around traffic again. This seems to be his go to maneuver. He sort of gets jammed in and then gets frustrated and just turns in front of other cars if he can. Oh, deciding to not turn left. All right, turning into some uh, 76 gas station. Maybe he's just trying to cut corners there. Yep, now he's on uh, Garfield Avenue. Still don't see any officers behind him. 
in pursuit of this man. Perhaps they just backed off. Just hopefully he'll drive. Whoa, okay. Took a U-turn, I think, in the middle of the intersection there. Going back on Garfield Avenue, back to where the area where he came from. So, oh, okay, pa pedestrian there talking maybe to that pedestrian. I don't know, no. All right. Trying to wave somebody down and who knows what he's trying to do there. Uh, can't really tell what that, passenger's got something in his hand. Oh, he looks like a cigarette or a joint or something. He's on his phone while he's driving erratically, taking another U-turn. Now turning on to, let's see. Oh, back on Garfield, okay. Now this is getting pretty predictable, so perhaps this would give officers an opportunity to set a spiked strip right, if he continues on this same pattern. At least it gives officers an idea of perhaps what intersections they might need to close or how to, how to box this guy in. I, I Going a little bit quicker now than he was before. You can see him passing the traffic. Uh, well, okay, driving up on the curb there. And uh, on Ira Avenue, Southgate, East Los Angeles area. They must know the helicopters are overhead watching him where he goes, so I don't see any, you know, potential hiding spots for this guy. He is pretty much out in the wide open, and the way he's driving, it's not hard to keep track of him. And we think this is a Honda. I don't know any status if it's a stolen car, vehicle, or anything, but... Um, Taking another weird left-hand turn as he's been doing from, oh, no, I guess not, just going straight. Seeming a little more agitated, though. He seems there's a lot more movement happening there on the driver's side. And we saw the passenger looking like he's holding a cigarette or a joint or whatever. Um, maybe they're on drugs, maybe they want to stay away from officers, afraid to get a DUI when they had that broken tail light. Certainly acting uh, very erratic and quite desperate to get away based on the driving that he's been doing. So in case you're watching our live stream right now on abc7.com, again, thanks for joining us on this Friday afternoon as we uh, follow this pursuit. Uh, this is uh, two suspects in this, I believe it's a Honda, and uh, wanted initially for a broken taillight in the Upland area. It's been going on for now, oh, at least 40 minutes or so. We've been on top of this. Uh, going speeds of 90 miles per hour on freeways, uh, on the 10 freeway in the Baldwin Park area, 605 freeway. Um, now it appears to be uh, parked, going into this parking lot. Okay, he's getting out of his car. He's holding onto his shorts. Oh, okay. They are trying to get that other white truck and uh, don't know why they thought they could get it. Um, it's interesting. But, okay, so that didn't work for them. They're back in their Honda right now. Back to the, back to the pursuit. 
turning left onto Clara Street right there. Um, driving up onto the Circle K, going into that Circle K right there. Um, you see a pedestrian there, hopefully he's minding that. Um, going onto Wilcox Avenue there that tried to make a getaway out of that car. You see the passenger, again, putting his hand out the window. Um, yes, yeah, so as you're watching this along with us, it's sort of like one of these things we wait and see what he does next. Um, been, definitely been driving erratic and going on the wrong side of the road. Going fast, um, taking strange turns like he's just doing right now. Um, U-turns in the middle of intersections. But if you're watching this on abc7.com, um, now's your chance you can, um, you want to see it on the larger screen, you can download our new connected apps, which is kind of cool. You can watch this uh, not just on your small computer screen, but you can watch it on Roku, um, Amazon Fire, Android TV, Apple TV. And all you have to do is search ABC7 Los Angeles. And it's a pretty good deal because you can be at home and you think, well, I want to see a better view of this or I want to just not have to hold my computer. I just download those free apps. Um, again, search ABC7 Los Angeles on any of those connected TV apps. So, um, pretty much covered them all, Roku, Amazon, Fire, Android TV, and Apple TV. Um, okay, now making some gestures outside his window. Um, hmm, what's he doing there with his? It looks like they have a, I don't know what they're doing there. If they have a map, a map quest or a, um, I'm just speculating, don't listen to me. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine as you watch along with me, you see. Some a lot of, could be, yeah, that, that's right. It could be a navigation system. Um, okay, that was some strange gesturing up to the skies. And um, yeah, they know that this is going to be their last hurrah for a while um, because once they're caught, they're, they're not, they're not going to be just let go because this has definitely been a dangerous pursuit as far as just putting people at risk and, and, they, and the driving, it could, they could have hit multiple pedestrians and different cars and they they bumped someone at least that we know of earlier. So Atlantic, uh-huh. Oh, Bruce Thomas, okay. Oh, great, we have our law enforcement expert, Bruce Thomas. Hey, Bruce, are you there? Yeah, I am, Ellen. How are you? Hi. It's really nice for you to call us in on this Friday afternoon, and we have to stop meeting like this. The only time we get to talk is during a pursuit or something, but we appreciate you, um, <laughs> you know, law enforcement expert that you are. So you've been watching this? Yeah, I've been watching it for a while now. Um, you know, they've been on mostly every major freeway in L.A. County and the Inland Empire, and then they've circled back to the Norwalk area, and now they're over in the South Cape. One of the things that uh, seems has transpired is law enforcement is totally backed off, including the helicopter also. Mm. So why do you think that is? Because of his, of his erratic driving or safety issues? Well, you know, in the last few minutes, we have seen some uh, very unsafe U-turns in the middle of intersections, cutting through gas stations, that kind of thing. His speeds don't seem to be that reckless at this point, but he is what they call gutter swiping, meaning he's, you know, passing on the right there. Um, I know the initial pursuit was over a, a broken taillight, which is basically a fix-it ticket. Mm -hmm. So there must have been maybe a little more information. But I don't, you know, typically law enforcement will back off, at least the ground units, when the pursuit is so dangerous as to endanger the public, the officers, oh. and believe it or not... Look at this, suspect. Bill. He's getting out of the car. He, he's basically trying to... every. Did you see what he just did? Yeah. Yeah. I don't very, know. very erratic uh, behavior here. Yeah, I don't know what he's thinking. Like, people are just going to leave their keys in the car? You oh, know, sometimes oh they, okay. They his, the, yeah, there you go. His buddy just dropped off a bag of something. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so we yeah, know I he mean, knows we, people. Yeah, it, it seems to be he's in an area he at least has friendlies with, or I know he's been on the phone quite a bit. Um, so he may be talking to them, saying, hey, we're going to come down this street. Can you meet us there? We need to drop off some loot, some stolen goods, maybe whatever they have in the car, which is illegal. Or they're also looking for friendlies to maybe foot bail and uh, just leave the car. Yeah. Wow. Some interesting. Yeah, that's pretty interesting because we've seen them dump a couple things out of the um, 
the car? I mean, we have seen it before when they drive around neighborhoods and people come out and give them water, <laughs> cigarettes. Jeez. Uh, we, we've seen it. Yeah. Interesting. And that's the second time he's tried to get a car, a car you know, hijack a car, carjack a car. Yeah, whenever you go into the carjacking, now you're looking at a level one or egregious felony, mm. which is a major crime. Oh, okay. Even just the attempt that we saw would be considered that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, even the attempt, it's basically 215 of the penal code carjacking, mm. and it is a felony punishable by state prison. Wow. Quite a big difference from having a broken taillight. Yeah, you, you know. go from a fix-it ticket to prison time, a big difference, as you just said. Yeah, wow. Pretty amazing. And you're right, Bruce. Yeah. He, um, he hasn't really been... Did I, wait, did I say Bruce? I called you Bill earlier. I'm so sorry. We remember Bill <laughs> you Thomas... You called me Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. There's a okay, Bill Thomas and a Bruce Thomas. definitely does. on you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, That's all right. It's an endearing term. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, let's see here. Where is he now? Okay, Clara, Clara Street, East uh, Los Angeles still. I don't know. You think that's wise to just back off somebody like this? Is that what you would have done? You know, um, as a watch commander and been involved in pursuits and, you know, and been managing or pursuit management, as they call it, I would have canceled it a long time ago. Mm. We're chasing, what, a broken taillight? It's not worth our effort. Oh. You know, I mean, maybe it does turn into something else through police work, but it ultimately, on face value, it's not worth endangering anybody's life for a broken tail light. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh. You know, and obviously there are certain factors that you have to give in a pursuit. Every agency may vary a little bit, but all pursuits are basically mandated from post, the Peace Officer Standard and Training um, agency up in Sacramento for the state of California. And we have to give certain factors. What's the reason for the pursuit? What are the speeds, traffic conditions, number of occupants, and what is the crime? Right, right. Well, certainly one of the, you kind of just wonder, you know, what is he, what is he thinking? And, and, and maybe he will get away, you know? You, it's happened yeah. before. Yeah, there is a percentage of pursuits where the uh, suspects do get away. I want to say it's gone up into maybe the 20 to 30 percent range. It used to be a lot less. Hmm. But as law enforcement realizes, the you know, weighing the checks and balances of a pursuit, third-party crashes, um, they've kind of backed off on lower-level pursuits now. And, and that makes sense. Rather than put the safety of others at risk, you know, hey, that makes sense to me. No, it does. And, you know, and the most important thing is the general public. Mm -hmm. Because you're driving along with maybe a, 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 you know, a minivan full of kids, and this guy slams into you because he ran the intersection at 80 miles an hour. Now you have some serious injuries, fatalities, and it's not a good outcome at all. Exactly, yeah. Well, sometimes in these kind of pursuits, you just hope he runs out of gas. Like, let, let's hope he had, like, a low tank. <laughs> That's yeah, I, I defer to Dave Koontz on that as far as miles. But it <laughs> seems like every pursuit we have, these cars get great gas mileage. Right. And they, and they take a licking like no tomorrow. Yeah, it's almost like spike a commercial. Strips. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, spike strips have flattened off four tires, the rims have fallen off, you know, and these cars keep going. It's amazing. Yeah. It really is. And the other two, the other factor, which I always find fascinating, is they never seem to run into the traffic that you and I have to deal with. Why is that? It, I've noticed that, too. Just you know, I, I don't sail under a lucky star like that, so I, I guess these guys do and gals do. I don't know. No, I consider you the lucky one. I wouldn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you made it through a whole law enforcement career and into your retirement only to, for us to call you and bother you. But we appreciate That's you right. so much. I, I, I stay busy all week. so yeah, I yeah. bet you do. You know, anytime, and I, I always told the younger deputies as I was getting toward the waning years of my career, I said, you know, the whole point of the career is to 
retire healthy, Mm -hmm. enjoy your retirement, do whatever your passion is. And if you can get away not being sued, that's a good thing, too. Yes. Well, I'm so glad that you're enjoying your retirement and still keeping your toes in it with us. Yeah. Yeah. And other jobs, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Look at him try to maneuver through this little uh, traffic stop here. That doesn't look like it's going to fit. Yeah. I, you know, right. look, they're still over in, Ooh. I think, I'm trying to read okay, it, but they're that's still in not, East LA area. Okay, look oh, at no, that. That's, that's significant damage there. Did you see that? Oh, and he's, I just, yeah. He's angry at the other person for not getting out of the way. And his whole yeah. front end came <laughs> off, that poor guy. So, so how does yeah. it change, Bruce, now when you have that kind of activity? Because right now, mostly it's just us following. Police have really pulled back. But you see something like that, how does that change what authorities are wanting to do because he's clearly uh, agitated at this point yeah yeah it, it's definitely gone up a, a degree or few or two as they say um what you have now is you have a hit and run misdemeanor unless the person's hurt then it'd be a felony um you could have maybe assault with a deadly weapon his vehicle on the other party um so you are looking at some higher level crimes right now um as far as if law enforcement is going to get back involved I, I really don't know. I mean, as a watch commander, I'd be like, okay, if you kind of run into it, let's chase it. Mm. For, I, I would give you a little bit of rope, so to speak, and see what's going on. Also, the attempted carjacking, you know, charge now. So the guy's... <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah. in theory, yeah. if he is uh, under the influence of any kind, then everything becomes a felony, yes? That's if- true. Um, it can be, yes. Because uh, I mean, if there's any bodily, yeah, any bodily injury would make it a felony. Yes. I just, uh, I just, it's it's flabbergasting to to think of yourself as a commuter. Somebody hits you, rips off your front bumper, and then sticks his head out the window, is angry mad. at you because you wouldn't get out. Well, there's something else just came off of his vehicle. Angry at you for not getting out of the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, anybody involved in a pursuit is not in their right mind anyway. Exactly. Good point. Um, you know, so in this case, yeah, this person is agitated, but in reality, now this person's left with the damaged car, um, maybe loses the loss of the car for a week or whatever, has to go to work, can't have a way to work now. It, it, things just keep dominoing into, he's, you know, the general public is being sucked into this uh, scenario. And, and he's, he does not appear to be staying in the same area now. I mean, he, for a while, he was staying on Paramount and Florence and just kind of going back and forth in the same area. But he's, now he's on Atlantic and Sicilia and Southgate. So, I mean, I guess to a degree he's back near East L.A. But, you know, there's no real way of getting, well, this is going to be interesting. So no real way to get in front of him and end it. Yeah, and you do have, if you stay in the Southgate area, you do have Southgate uh, PD. They're a smaller agency with, you know, limited resources. But on the other side, you have the sheriffs over in uh, the Firestone Florence area from Century Station, and they have plenty of resources. So I would think they would definitely request a helicopter again, maybe, to uh, to monitor this. Yeah, now that, now that things have ramped up a little bit. Yeah, you definitely have gone from lower level stuff to, to felony stuff, so I would definitely uh, think that they could, um, you know, definitely follow it or, or at least monitor it or do in a surveillance mode of some sort. Well, when you're, how much does it play in, uh, and I don't even know that this does, this is just kind of a question as we watch a numbskull drive around town, um, that you don't want to set, as law enforcement, a precedent that if you keep driving, we'll eventually leave you alone. I mean, at some point, you you want to take this person into custody. So how does, or does that at all play into effect? Yeah, you, you, I mean, ultimately, you want to be, you want to take bad guys to jail. That, that's the goal of law enforcement. However, it's got to be done in this case in pursuits safely and with the general public's safety in mind also. So, you know, you go into surveillance mode or tracking mode via helicopter. Yeah, because at some point, his actions right now are, are no more safe than the chase because he has not changed his behavior, really, uh, with them in track mode. 
he continues to be dangerous, and you can see that. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely doing some very unsafe maneuvers, uh, passing on the right. He hit that car, some other stuff. Yeah, there's definitely been a change in this guy's attitude uh, more recently. But, you know, that's why you have a helicopter which can safely monitor um, a pursuit or at least a suspect vehicle without actually getting into it until uh, that point. He is highly agitated yeah, at this point. When we are able to see high. in that driver's side window, he is uh, gesticulating wildly and bouncing his head back and forth, almost as if he's hitting his head on the steering wheel. He's certainly banging his fists on the steering wheel at times. Um, yeah, the, and that's another thing, too, correct, Bruce? I mean, this doesn't necessarily end when the guy start, stops driving. I mean, there's potential, all kinds of uh, potential negative outcomes with somebody who's this agitated uh, at the end of a pursuit. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, just because the vehicle stops doesn't mean the tactical planning for the pursuit ends. Now you have what's called the pursuit terminus or the end of the pursuit. And is this guy going to come out of the car willingly? Are they going to have to use force? Does it become like a barricaded suspect in the car where you may have to involve a special weapons unit, in this case, sheriff's SCB, canines, uh, less lethal weaponry. There's a whole slew of other problems that could show up on this. Well, and this is no joke here in that he's in a parking lot of a retail outlet. I wasn't able to really see what the store was, but it is interesting in that this pandemic has so few people going to retail outlets, which you can see he's driving around in a parking lot, but there are still people there. And, and all of those people there are at risk when it's a smart and final, it looks like. Um, so everybody continues to be at risk with this guy showing the reckless nature that look at that, the reckless nature that he's shown over the past hour. So, and then by the, uh, that's another thing. Sometimes I, you know, if they had been, I guess, I guess they just don't want to pin him in Bruce. Is that what you're thinking? I mean, cause you know, if you're near and he's in that parking lot, you have an opportunity, you know, to, to keep him from getting out of there, but. You just don't want to run that risk at this point? Is that what you're thinking? Um, you know, yeah, because typically you won't use regular patrol cars to box somebody in. Uh, right, especially sure. if this, it can create a crossfire. Maybe the suspect is armed. You always assume the highest level of uh, problem. So you don't really want to box them in. Um, that would be something you'd use the Bearcats or an armored vehicle for ultimately down the road. True, because also he can use that weapon that he's driving. You know, so you don't, That's run, correct. You don't want to right. put an officer in the line of that, that either. You're totally correct, Phil, because now you have the vehicle, which is a, um, a deadly weapon, a multi-thousand pound weapon. Okay, so here we are about to turn, Ellen. Yeah, <laughs> and definitely. This is another one of those moments. And under the influence, because earlier we clearly saw the passenger with uh, what looked like a, you know, a joint of some type and... Uh, that a joint of some type. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what else is in there besides pot? Yeah, I don't know. This, hey, we're online. You know, we can we can free flow of ideas here, Bruce. You want to weigh in on what you think it might have been? Well, I mean, it could have been it could have been something added into it. It though. could have been a lot of. There could be a whole lot of things. Today's marijuana is that strong. Is, that is the truth. Uh, but as I'm, can, I'm going to go with Alan's investigative journey. <laughs> exactly. But all kidding aside, Bruce, that's a factor here. You, you don't know. Sure it is. Right. And now you have somebody under the influence of a controlled substance, substance rather. Okay. So now. does weigh into it. So we've got another turn here uh, that looks. Okay. So now we've reengaged, it appears. Uh, it does appear, Bruce, as if we have an officer has come right up on him fairly quickly, I might add. Is that kind of the thing, Bruce? I mean, you, you know where he is, you see where he is, and given an opportunity, you close and close fast? Um, in this case, they want to maybe make sure that uh, that officer has the right vehicle because they may not have put out the license plate and a real accurate description. So he sees a black Honda with a male and a white shirt thinking, is this my vehicle? Gets up close now gets information, radios that in, and they say, yes, that's the vehicle we're chasing. Okay, well, they're now on the 710 northbound, um, and it looks like leaving the Southgate area. 
Uh, 710 is not necessarily the freeway that's going to take you a long way, but it'll certainly get you to different freeways. So we'll see exactly where they end up um, heading on the 710 North. But we did see again, uh, saw officers get up pretty close and he does appear as if he's increased his speed a little bit, but not not dramatically so uh, 50 miles an hour or so, um, which is yeah. certainly not even really freeway speed, but also more. Welcome back. We continue to do coverage and you might be tuning in because you want to see um, the director of the L.A. County Department of Health Services, Dr. Christina Galley. She is standing by and she is here. We're trying to figure out exactly what's going to happen with this chase, but she is going to answer your questions. We hope there are a lot of questions that have come in from viewers and she has a lot of the answers when it comes to COVID and what she she doesn't know. I'll bet she knows where to find it. And I'm looking forward to hearing that uh, what she has to say. And she's patiently standing by for you, Philip. Uh, but we are watching this pursuit that's been happening for about an hour now. It started in Upland. Uh, this uh, Honda that you can see there, the black on the right, on left side of the screen. Um, two passengers in that car. It started as a broken tail light, and they refused to pull over. And since then, it's uh, been a pursuit that has been going through the streets of most pretty much every freeway in the Los Angeles area and a lot through Paramount and, and the City of Commerce. And uh, Philip, this guy's been desperate to get away from authorities, and we've just he's displayed quite some uh, desperate moves. Well, and there sadly are several people left in his wake that. 
might not be injured, but financially they are at risk. Look mm -hmm. at this car zooming out. This oh, white car. Does this car. white car know him? Or, um, or just wants to get well, away from him? Well, that's just a normal freeway driver, yeah. apparently. Um, and that just goes to show that he's not driving at freeway speeds per se. He's been driving around 50 miles an hour is what we saw earlier. Uh, I'm looking now, yeah, roughly about 50 miles an hour. And uh, he's on the 710 northbound. And lately we were watching and the driver was particularly agitated. In many cases, he became most angry when he ran into somebody else that mm -hmm. wouldn't get out of his way as he was trying uh, to navigate some of the congestion here in Los Angeles.